Sure. Um, so Castleman disease is actually a group of related disorders and in um, David's lab at the University of Pennsylvania we study the idiopathic form of multicentric Castleman disease. So this form of Castleman disease is idiopathic meaning we really don't know what the cause of it is. Uh, but these patients present with multiple regions of lymph node enlargement as well as flu-like symptoms uh, and they'll typically progress to multiple organ system failure if they don't respond to the only FDA approved treatment which is siltuximab. Uh, so a number of these patients will end up in the ICU uh, and these are the, the patients that we're interested in further characterizing. They have this constellation of symptoms called Tafro syndrome. Uh, so these patients we will treat with chemotherapy um, if they don't respond. And that really highlights this unmet need that we have for additional treatment options for these patients that don't respond to current therapies that are available. The biggest issue is actually that patients will tend to go undiagnosed for an extended period of time. So they'll be in the hospital or they'll be experiencing symptoms um, for extended periods of time before a lymph node is assessed. Um, and this can lead to a delay in the, the beginning of treatment. So the most important step for diagnosis is to conduct a lymph node biopsy and to see within the lymph node a characteristic Castleman disease feature. Um, so here we'll see dysmorphic germinal centers. Um, some patients will have a lot of vasculature, um, etc. So the important thing here is to collect the lymph node. And once we see Castleman disease features within the lymph node, um, then to look at their clinical measures, their platelets, um, CRP levels, and determine whether that's consistent with Castleman disease. And then finally, it's very important to eliminate related disorders. So to determine these patients don't have other um, auto-inflammatory conditions or autoimmune diseases such as lupus.